Um, so the next talk is on sparse feature fa factorization for recommender sy systems with uh, knowledge graphs. Hello, everybody. I'm Antonio Ferrara, PhD student from Politecnico di Bari. Thank you for uh, attending this presentation, and many thanks to my co-authors for their effort in this work. The history of recommender systems is strictly related to the evolution of collaborative filtering models. These techniques usually have a leading, a leading performance, but their complexity in space and time often rapidly increase with the data set size. On the other hand, we have content-based models, which can be often interpretable, but they can suffer from over-specialization if we fail on recommending novel and diverse items. Some previous work attempted to integrate content information into collaborative filtering, coming, for example, from tags, images, demographic data, and so on. But these models are usually very large and dense, and they need hundreds or thousands of features to estimate uh, the prediction. Here we propose KGFlex, which is a new sparse model based on small embeddings with a higher degree of expressiveness, and that has been studied on uh, information coming from knowledge graphs, which are usually a very uh, rich source of structured information. In knowledge graphs, we have entities connected by means of some directed relations that we call predicates. Here we define uh, an hope predicate as a chain of n predicates connecting a starting entity with a final entity. And we assume here that each item in the catalog of our recommender system has a mapping to uh, an entity in the knowledge graph. So here, for example, we can see some items, the large circles, connected to some other entities, the little circles, by means of some predicates. And these are the three assumptions that guided the development of KGFlex. The first one is that users make decisions based on just a small subset of item characteristics. And such characteristics can be hidden at a higher depth. So for example, a user may like Central Park because it's in the USA and not just because it's in New York. And finally, not all the characteristics have the same impact in the user decision process. So based on that, the first element of KGFlex is the characterization of items and users. In particular, for each item, we, um, we collect all the features of chains of predicates and uh, final objects that we can reach by exploring the knowledge graph at a certain depth, starting from the item entity. And then, all the features, uh, all the, uh, the users, sorry, are characterized by all the features that characterize the item they interacted with. And here it comes the, us the user perspective. So we said that a user can differently consider the features in uh, uh, our um, decision process. So the question is how to measure this feature impact. We used the notion of information gain from the information theory. We know that the entropy of a random variable measures its uncertainty. So for example, we have one for a fair coin or entropy zero for a coin that always comes up ahead. Then the information gain given by another variable is the expected reduction on that entropy that we have when we know the value of this new variable. Given that, in KGFlex, for each user, we build a data set composed, uh, composed by all the positive items enjoyed by the users, and a same amount of negative items randomly chosen. So this data set have complete uncertainty. In order to discriminate positive from negative items, so understand, in order to understand uh, how much the features helps to discriminate positive from, neg from negative items, we use the notion of information gain for that feature. So first of all, we compute the frequency of each feature in positive and negative items for that user. So for example, here, PU not F in the table at the left is the number of times that that feature is not present in positive items. Then, thanks to the map at, uh, at the right of this slide, we can compute the information gain for that feature 
for that user. And that constitutes the importance that that feature has in the user decision process. And this is how KG Flex is, constitute, is constituted. In particular, here we don't have uh, nor user or item explicit representations, but we represent all the features in the systems in the system as embeddings in a latent space. And in particular, for each feature, we have a global embedding that is shared among all the users and a personal embedding that accounts for personal feelings of uh, each user on that feature. Then the dot product between the global and the personal embedding constitutes the affinity of that feature for that user. And then the sum of all the features in common, uh, of all these uh, products for, the feature, for all the features in common between the user and the item weighted by their importance estimates the overall affinity uh, of user U to item I. So the big news is that here we don't need to handle thousands of features, but we just need the subset of features in common between the user and the item. And we use BPR to optimize our model. As for the experimental part, we use three binarized data sets, namely Yahoo Movies, Facebook Books, and MovieLens 1M, where, uh, with the items mapped to uh, the DBpedia knowledge graph entities. We explored the knowledge graph at depth two, and we filtered out, this, out some, uh, feature, some features based on their frequency and their entropy. We compared KG Flex performance with uh, some other factorization-based models, uh, BPRMF, RandallMF, NeoMF, and KAHFM, and with some other state-of-the-art algorithms. Uh, all the experiments have been con uh, conducted with the framework Elliot, and at this QR code, you can find all the uh, reproducibility details and implementation. Um, as for the accuracy result, we found that KG Flex EU is usually comparable or slightly worse than the other factorization-based models, but its diversity is always higher than the other ones. And uh, um, this uh, shows also an improved personalization of KG Flex that we connect to the personalized view that we can grant by means of the uh, personal embeddings. And at the right, we can see how stable is uh, uh, KG Flex uh, with the trade off between accuracy and diversity when varying the data set. We also measured the algorithmic bias, and we found that, in general, KG Flex is less affected by the popularity bias, and it is fair with respect to the items, and in particular, with respect to the items belonging to the long tail. We also uh, analyzed the impact that the knowledge graph exploration has on accuracy and diversity, and we overall found that the features coming from the first op provide accuracy but, but not diversity, while the features coming from the second op provide, di provide diversity. And this is because they can help KG Flex to catch more hidden information more, um, by means of the features at a higher depth. So that the complete version of KG Flex guarantees satisfactory results both in accuracy and diversity. And finally, we studied whether KG Flex is able to preserve the original semantics. And in particular, we measured um, for each feature uh, the importance that uh, it has uh, for the user, both in the original data set and, and in the final recommended list. And we found that, uh, for example, uh, for Yahoo, uh, Yahoo Movies, we have that the 79% of topics uh, uh, and interests persist in the, in the final recommendation. So to conclude, 
we saw that KGFlex is accurate, superior in diversity thanks to the user perspectives, resilient to the algorithmic bias, and semantics pre preserving. As future investigation, we want to study new types of side information, some alternatives to the information gain, and also some other types of losses. So many thanks for your attention. Thank you, Antonio, for this great talk. Um, I would like to ask a question. So um, in using the features from the knowledge graph, have you tried going further than two hops, or do you already at three hops come to the point of diminishing returns? OK, we, we, we just tried with one and two hop. We can also try with more hops, of course, because the system is there. But uh, uh, of course, we need uh, uh, to take into account a lot of features. So since we obtained um, good results with two hopes, uh, we, um, we, we studied up to hope. But of course, we can also consider more hopes. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we also have one question from the audience. Yeah. Um, so the question is by Giacomo. Um, I, I hope I pronounced this right. So since you are using KG and hops, uh, do you think your model can be expanded to generate explanations? To generate explanations? Um, uh, it, it can be considered as an interpretable model, of course, since we have uh, an explicit representation of which are the features that um, give um, the contribution to the final recommendation of an item to a user. Since, uh, so, so that uh, we can consider this model, of course, interpretable. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I think we also have one question from the audience. Yeah. Hi, uh, very nice talk. My name is Anna. I'm from AstraZeneca UK. I was just wondering, uh, can you generalize your approach to more complex graph embeddings that are not just random walk-based? For example, trans-E, complex, this mode? You know, these types of embeddings. Yeah, of course. And you can also generalize it to other type of information not coming necessarily from knowledge graphs. So uh, the idea of the, um, of the feature representation is there. So you can embed this with uh, whatever kind of, uh, of, uh, of information. We tried here with knowledge graphs. But of course, you can extend the, uh, the idea to other type of information. Yeah. Can you maybe speculate if you're going to gain any benefit from using other types of embeddings? Or do you think uh, this simple enough uh, to hop embeddings uh, do, do the job? And you, you don't need to go beyond that? We can, of course, suppose that uh, there, there are rooms to, to improve the work, uh, of course. Uh, in, in our case, we found that uh, the, uh, the two hop help to discover this kind of hidden information. But uh, yes, we can speculate that there are rooms to improve the work. Yeah, thank you. Thank you a lot. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I think with this, we can conclude the talk. If there are any more uh, questions, um, feel free to ask them online. And with this, we can continue with our next uh, presentation.